Hey guys, and welcome back to another Infinite Flight video training series. This is Mark, and today I'm just going to be going over uh, the basics of METARs, how to read them when you're working on your flight plan, uh, how to understand them. It's just important to know that when you're working on your flight plan, going to a certain field, or even for the field that you're departing from, that you understand how to read them. And it's not that METARs are difficult, it's just there are so many codes uh, that could go into play or could be used uh, that learning all of them is probably the most difficult part but just having a basic understanding will help you currently with infinite flight so let's go ahead and get started uh, I'm going to be using uh, Honolulu today and uh, when you look at the map you click on an airport and what will pop up is the airport um, identifier it will show the winds uh, for that airport and whether there's live ATC uh, you just click on that tag that pops up on the map, and then you'll get that box on the left-hand side that you can see here. Now, today I'm just going to be covering the METARs, which is the top portion. The bottom portion are the TAFs, which is the uh, Terminal Aerodome uh, forecast, which I'll cover in a later tutorial. So for today, I'm just going to go over the METARs very quickly, just to keep it short, keep it very simple, so that you have an understanding what each section means on the METARs, and then I can cover each section individually, um, in later tutorials uh, one by one because literally it could take hours to go through all of this to help you to have a better understanding uh, but today it's just going to be very short and quick uh, so let's go ahead and get started so I've zoomed in here to the METARs for Honolulu and the first thing you see is the airport code which is the airport identifier or the ICOA code uh, Honolulu is going to be PHNL uh, so it's going to be airport specific the next section is going to be the day of the month and the time in Zulu. Uh, so this is on the 25th of the month. Uh, the time is 0020 Zulu. Uh, again, I will cover how to read Zulu time uh, in a later tutorial. Uh, but just to keep it quick and simple, uh, just understand that that next section is the day of the month and the time of the day given in Zulu. In this next section, uh, you will see the winds. Uh, which are given in the direction as well as the velocity. Uh, so at Honolulu, the winds are 150 at 16 gusting to 23. Uh, so keep in mind that the winds are always blowing from. Uh, for takeoff, you're taking off to a direction. So the winds are blowing from 150 at 16 knots. The G stands for gust, which means that they're gusting up to 23 knots. Next, we have the visibility which is given in statute miles. Now the difference uh, between statute and nautical is a statute mile is a standard mile, which is 5,280 feet. A nautical mile is 6,076 feet. Uh, so right now at Honolulu, it's 10 statute miles. Visibility also may be more than 10 miles, but it, the most it will ever read is 10, or if it's less than 10, it will give that number. Okay, next we have sky condition, which is the base of the cloud cover, and it's always given an AGL, or actual ground level. And as of right now, uh, the cloud cover uh, is scattered at 1,000 feet, broken at 3,600 feet, or overcast at 7,000 feet. Again, I will elaborate more on these sections in a later tutorial, uh, just right now, just giving you the basic meaning of each section. Now we have the temperature and the dew point, which is always going to be given in Celsius. If for any reason that the temperature is ever below zero, uh, it will have an M in front of it, which means minus. So it may say M06 slash M02 or whatever uh, the degrees are below zero. But every time you see the temperature and dew point, it will be in Celsius. Next, we have the altimeter reading, which is always going to show the current pressure at the field elevation. Uh, so again, this is just the altimeter reading. This next section is for remarks. They're not always there. You don't always see them when you're reading the METARs. Again, I will cover this in a later section. Uh, but just basically, it's you know for different types of information, such as maintenance data, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so I will cover this later on. I just wanted to show you this section of the TAF real quick because you will see this also in the METARs. Uh, but it's talking about the current weather, uh, rain, snow, thunderstorm, um, haze, fog, so on and so forth. Uh, there are so many descriptor codes for this. 
uh, and I will cover this in a later tutorial, but I just wanted to show you what it was, what it looked like, so that way you would have an understanding of what it means if you do see it in the METARS. I know I've gone over this fairly quick today, uh, but I just wanted you to have the basic understanding of METARS uh, when you are looking at them. Again, I will cover uh, more detail, more in depth uh, in later tutorials. Uh, guys, I hope this has helped answer any questions that you do have about understanding METARS. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or any comments. Uh, also, guys, make sure that you do subscribe here for more great tutorials that we do have. Uh, also, check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. Also, follow us now on our Instagram. Again, my name is Mark. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.